The C preprocessor is pretty powerful and can help you write clean code. In this video, I'll talk about how the preprocessor works and the pound include and pound define directives. The C preprocessor is the first thing that happens when you GCC your source code. Its goal is to make a modified copy of your source code following the instructions that you give it in special instructions called directives. These directives start with the pound sign and tell the preprocessor how it should modify your code. There are lots of preprocessor instructions, but this video will only talk about pound include and pound define. The pound include directive tells the preprocessor to read another file and insert it at that point in our source file. This helps us share things between source files and gets access to many libraries that come with C. The designers of C had a goal of making the language as small as possible. So some things that are normally part of other languages are in separate libraries in C. To get the ones you need, you just include their.h files. We'll see a lot of these, but the most commonly used one is standardio.h, which gives us functions like printf and scanf. In another video, I'll talk about putting our code in multiple C files and how they get put together to make a single executable. When we do that, we'll be using pound include to include our own .h files. In that case, the file name is surrounded by quotes instead of triangle brackets. The second preprocessor directive I want to talk about is pound define, which tells the preprocessor to replace text in our source file. The format of a pound define instruction is always pound define name stuff and it tells the preprocessor to replace every time we use name with stuff. Now that sounds like it would be pretty trivial to use, but there are lots of little tricks to using pound defines well. So watch all the way to the end of the videos to see all the little details. The simplest and most common use of pound define is to define constants. In pound defines, spaces really matter. The thing that will be replaced is always the first space separated token after the pound define. So in this define, pi will be replaced by 3.14159. So we've essentially declared a constant, but there is no assignment statement and no semicolon. And pi isn't a variable. It doesn't take up any place in memory. It's just a token that will get replaced by the string 3.14159. When we declare a pound define, everything after the first token is what is used in the replacement. So we can put some pretty complex code there. In this case, I've defined the word debug in all caps to be a printf statement. Now we have to type carefully. That semicolon that you automatically put at the end of a print statement can't be in the pound define because there will already be one in the statement where the replacement is being made. Pound defines are even more powerful than that. We can pass things into pound defines. In this example, the pound define has a parameter of x, which is used here in the replacement string. When we invoke the define with a 42, the 42 replaces x in the pound defines replacement string. Now it's important to really understand what is happening here. First, remember that we're giving instructions to the preprocessor at compilation time. So these replacements happened before the compiler even runs. Second, x is not a variable. And truth be told, the pound define isn't treating 42 as an integer. The argument of the pound define is treated like a string and the replacement is done without any type or syntax checking. Bottom line, this is not calling a pound define like we call a function. It's just string replacement instructions in our source code. We can have more than one of these string replacement kinds of parameters. In this example, I defined pmult to print out a function of two values. The values that I pass in replace the parameters in the order we pass them in. So when I pass in size and 42, size replaces both of the x's in the replacement string, and 42 replaces the y. 
this is all looking pretty contrived. Let's look at a more realistic example. In this one, I've defined epsilon equals. When we're comparing real numbers, rounding errors can make two values that should be equal not be exactly equal. Often, the way we deal with this is to give an epsilon value and say they're equal if they are within epsilon of each other. For example, if we were comparing values of financial data, we might want to set epsilon to a tenth of a penny and say they're equal if they're within a tenth of a penny of each other. So here, I have defined epsilon equals to take three parameters, two values I want to compare, and an epsilon for how close they have to be in order to be considered equal. The replacement string calculates the absolute value of their difference and compares it to epsilon. It will evaluate to true if they're close enough. In this if statement, I'm asking if my func of three is within one one thousandth of 32. After the preprocessor runs, this is what the code will look like. If I have to make a lot of these comparisons, the pound defined makes the code easier to write and easier to read. However, it's really important to remember that epsilon equals is not a function. No function call is being made here. That's the basics of pound define, but there are lots of details that really matter when you're writing them. First, spaces are critical. The token that will be replaced is space separated. So, if you accidentally put a space between the name and the parameter list, it will think the parameter list is part of the replacement string. When you try to use it, it will replace the name my a by everything after the my a and will leave the parentheses and your argument completely alone. When you use these more complicated pound defines, if you make a mistake, you often get really weird syntax errors. Since you never see the code that the preprocessor makes, it's hard to notice that the problem is being called by a bug in the pound define. However, there is one exception to the spaces rule that we talked about on the prior slide. You are allowed to have spaces between the parameters in the pound defines parameter list. So, not between the pound defines name and the parameter list, but within the parameter list is okay. If your replacement string is really long, you can continue it on the following line. Just put a backslash at the end of the line where you want to continue. The preprocessor will not include the backslash or the carriage return in the replacement string it uses. In this case, I put some spaces to indent the second line. Those will be included in the replacement string. When your pound define includes a mathematical computation, it's often useful to put parentheses around the replacement string. This makes sure that if you use the define in the middle of a bigger calculation, the operation it encodes will be calculated before it is combined with the surrounding calculations. In this example, I defined discount, assuming that X is the percent you should be discounted on a price. If I do not include parentheses in my pound define, the resulting math is incorrect. The parentheses make sure that we do the subtraction before any other operation happens. This is such a good idea that some teams make their coding standards require the parentheses on pound defines that encode a calculation. The wisdom of including parentheses extends to the use of a defines parameters in the replacement string. Remember that we can pass any string into a parameter. So if I pass x plus y, into this pound define that is supposed to square its argument, the result will not be correct. However, if I put parentheses around the parameters when they're used in the replacement string, then the pound define works even if an expression is passed into it. One last caveat on pound defines. You can't use them to build numbers. In this example, I tried to use a pound define to build the number 10.2. However, the way the preprocessor does the replacement, the compiler will give a syntax error, expecting the statement to end before the period. Basically, the rule is that the result of the pound defines replacement ends a token for the compiler. So that result can't be combined with anything else. 
not all pound to find tricks work. Those are the details of pound include and pound define. I'll make another video about the other preprocessor directives soon.